at it again and uh we've got an interesting video here but before we get into that i have a very very important message please please make sure you watch this okay uh there is someone impersonating me in the comment section from time to time so please 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 make sure you guys are not falling for the scam make sure whenever you see any name uh they're, they're taking my profile picture and they're trying to copy my name, but they can't copy it exactly. So they're putting like a bunch of numbers after it, or they're putting like Doc Rich Telegram or Doc Rich WhatsApp and a bunch of numbers or something. Make sure it simply says Doc Rich. That's it. Any other Doc Rich with a bunch of numbers, that is not me. Okay? It's not me. Don't fall for any scams or anything like that. Okay? Please, 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 please. Do not. I try to delete it when I catch it, but I apologize. I'm only one person. You know, I don't always catch the person. And of course, they keep making new profiles. So I'm always having to check and recheck and make sure they're not popping back up. So please, guys, do not fall for that scam. All right. My official name is only Doc Rich on YouTube. So make sure that's all you see. All right. No numbers, no extra stuff after that. But anyway. I've talked enough. Thank you guys for all of the continued love and support. I'm sorry you guys are having to deal with this issue. I don't know. YouTube is just terrible with bots and all this other extra stuff. You know, I, I, I apologize, guys. I'm sorry. But anyway, let's dive on it, right on into this video and let's check it out. That I'm sure you're aware of. You've seen it. It's in most hymnals throughout our churches. It's called the National Anthem. It is our song as an American. We go, however, to a ball game. We stand in our church services and we sing the words of that song and they float over our minds and our lips and we don't even realize what we're singing. Most of us have memorized it as a child, but we've never really thought about what it means. Let me tell you a story. Francis Scott Key was a lawyer in Baltimore. The colonies were engaged in vicious conflict with the mother country, Britain. Because of this conflict and the protractedness of it, they had accumulated prisoners on both sides. The American colonies had prisoners and the British had prisoners. And the American government initiated a move. They went to the British and they said, let us negotiate for the release of these prisoners. They said, we want to send a man out to discuss this with you. They were holding the American prisoners in boats about a thousand yards offshore. And they said, we want to send a man by the name of Francis Scott Key. He will come out and negotiate to see if we can make a mutual exchange. On the appointed day in a rowboat, he went out to this boat and he negotiated with the British officials. And they reached a conclusion that men could be exchanged on a one-for-one -one basis. Francis Scott Key, jubilant with the fact that he'd been successful, went down below in the boats and what he found was a cargo hold full of humanity, men. And he said, men, I've got news for you tonight. You're free. Wow. He said, tonight I have negotiated successfully your return to the colonies. He said, you'll be taken out of this boat, out of this filth, out of your chains. As he went back up on board to arrange for their passage to the shore, the admiral came and he said, we have a slight problem. He said, we will still honor our commitment to release these men, but it'll be merely academic after tonight. It won't matter. And Francis Scott Key said, what do you mean? He said, well, Mr. Key, he said, tonight we have laid an ultimatum upon the colonies. Your people will either capitulate and lay down the colors of that flag that you think so much of, or you see that fort right over there, Fort Henry? He said, we're going to remove it from the face of the earth. He said, how are you going to do that? He said, if you will, scan the horizon of the sea. And as he looked, he could see hundreds of little dots. And he said, that's the entire British war fleet. He said, all of the gunpowder, all of the armament is being called upon to demolish that fort. It will be here within striking distance in a matter of about two and a half hours. He said, the war is over. These men would be free anyway. He said, you can't shell that fort. He said, that's, that's a large fort. He said, it's full of women and children. He says, it's predominantly not a military fort. He said, don't worry about it. They said, we've left them a way out. And he said, what's that? He said, do you see that flag way up on the rampart? 
He said, we have told them that if they will lower that flag, the shelling will stop immediately. And we'll know that they've surrendered, and you'll now be under British rule. Francis Scott Key went down below and told the men what was about to happen. And they said, how many ships? He said, hundreds. The ships got closer. Francis Scott Key went back up on top and he said, men, I'll shout down to you what's going on as we watch. As twilight began to fall, and as the haze hung over the ocean as it does at sunset, suddenly the British... Twilight last gleaming. Rampart. Interesting. Wow. War fleet unleashed. <clears throat> he says the sound was deafening. There were so many guns that there were no reliefs. He said it was absolutely impossible to talk or hear. He said suddenly the sky, although dark, was suddenly lit. And he says from down below, all he could hear the men, the prisoners, saying was, tell us where the flag is. What have they done with the flag? Is the flag still flying over the rampart? Tell us. One hour, two hours, three hours into the shelling. Every time the bomb would explode and it would be close to the flag, they could see the flag in the illuminated red glare of that bomb. And Francis... Holy... I, I, I'm literally getting goosebumps listening to this. Wow. Wow. I'm genuinely getting goosebumps. Can y'all see that? Is the camera... Look, look at my arm. Look at that. Look, I'm I'm legit getting goosebumps watching this. This is crazy. Wow. I mean, obviously, you know, we, we all know about the Star Spangled Banner, but the story behind it, I mean, sheesh. And as he's explaining it, like the songs like coming up in my head, like bits and pieces of it, like, oh, that's wow. You know? Sheesh. This is crazy. Holy. Scott Key would report down to them in the illuminated red glare of that bomb. And Francis Scott Key would report down to the men below. It's still up. It's not down. The Admiral came and he said, your people are insane. He said, what's the matter with them? He said, don't they understand this is an impossible situation? Francis Scott Key said he remembered what George Washington had said. He said the thing that sets the American Christian apart from all other people in the world is he will die on his feet before he'll live on his knees. Ooh. 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 I feel that. I'd rather die on my feet than live on my knees i mean i do feel like there there is still a major portion of america that still thinks that way i'd rather die on my feet than live on my knees you know like i'm not going out without without a fight and i think some of the powers that be understand that they know that and that's one of the things that's kind of been holding them off a little bit the admiral said on his knees is he will die on his feet before he'll live on his knees mm. Mm. the admiral said we have now instructed all of the guns to focus on the rampart to take that flag down he said we don't understand something our reconnaissance tells us that that flag has been hit directly again and again and again and yet it's still flying we don't understand that but he said, now we're about to bring every gun for the next three hours to bear on that point. Francis Scott, he said the barrage was unmerciful. All that he could hear was the men down below praying. The prayer. God, keep that flag flying where we last saw it. There's that American spirit, baby. Even in a terrible situation, they're locked at, 
locked up in the bottom of a boat and they know they'll be released if they just lower the flag. Uh -uh. I'll die on my feet before I live on my knees. <laughs> Sunrise came. He said there was a heavy mist hanging over the land, but the rampart was tall enough. There stood the flag, completely nondescript, in shreds. The flagpole itself was at a crazy angle, but the flag was still at the top. Francis Scott Key went aboard and immediately went into Fort Henry to see what had happened. And what he found had happened was that that flagpole and that flag had suffered repetitious direct hits. And when hit had fallen, but men, fathers, who knew what it meant for that flag to be on the ground, although knowing that all of the British guns were trained on it, walked over and held it up humanly until they died. Their bodies were removed and others took their place. Francis Scott Key said what held that flagpole in place at that unusual angle were Patriots' bodies. He penned the song, Oh, what? say can you see by the dawn's early light, light. what so proudly we hailed, hailed at the twilight's last, last, gleaming. last gleaming. Yes, sir. Or the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through, through the night that the flag was still there. <laughs> oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet fly and wave mm. or the land of the free and the home of the brave mm. the debt was demanded the price it was paid oh say can you see by the dawn what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air gave Wow. 
what an amazing story that was my goodness the bodies holding up the flag you know people talk about being courageous you know having courage i've seen some shameful um statements about people having courage what those men did that night that day that was courageous that was courage knowing that in all likelihood there's a 99.9 percent .9 chance you're cooked but still going into the fight regardless going to grab that flag and hold it up regardless that's courage because not everybody could do that not everybody could face that reality in that moment and still go forth and do what those brave men did that's bravery and courage for you right there so when all these folks talk about oh yeah this is courageous no it's not stop it what those men did that night is courageous flag being held up by the bodies of people who went to grab it themselves because they were being bombarded and even even amongst the men if you want to even, even if you don't want to talk about the men holding up the flag, the men that were locked up underneath the, you know, in the boat, they didn't ask to be released. I mean, they wanted to, of course, but they didn't say, hey, tell them to go lower the flag now. Make sure that flag is still standing. That's courage right there. That's courage, too. In my humble opinion, that's courage, too, because you're a prisoner. You don't know what they're about to do to you. You're on their ship. They could take you back and, you know, do some horrible, terrible, no good, very bad things to you. And yet you still say, keep that flag standing. Wow. Literally gave me goosebumps. Hopefully the camera picked that up. Uh, I, I mean, I just whew, never heard the story behind that entire situation. And now, and like I was explaining, hearing it be, being explained, you know, I was hearing the lyrics of the song in my head as he was explaining some of the situations that were going down. And I'm like, wow, now I get it. Now I understand. And for a long time in my life, I mean, if we're just going to be candid, I, I, I never really even cared too much to, to, to learn about this, the, the history of it all. Um, I'm, a, I'm ashamed to say, but if we're going to be truthful, that's a fact, you know, never really cared too much. And now that this journey began and ah, I'm ashamed that I didn't learn, learn about this stuff sooner. How wonderful of a story is that, you know, shout out to, you know, obviously those brave men who fought to make sure that we can live where we live. The brave men that went and held up that flag, even in the face of what they had to face, trained all cannons in the direction of that flag every last bit of firepower they had was directed at that flag and all those men i mean that is that's courage on its highest level right there so yeah um if there's any more like inspiring stories about the u.s like th like this obviously I, I i don't think it gets any better than this but if there are any more please let me know hit me up in the dm Comment it in the comment section. And of course, look out for that scammer too, please. And let everybody else know, because I know not everybody watches every single video. So if you ever see, you know, the scammer in question in the comment section, let folks know, because they try to reply to a lot of different people I've noticed. Um, so yeah, but wow, proud Americans, baby. Now I understand. Now I completely understand why people fly that flag high and proud but as always y'all let me know what you thought about this crazy amazing wonderful inspirational story right here in the comment section below like share comment hit that subscribe button before you go peace and love i'm out